Well, for once, it's not a rainy day in Bangor. So it's summer in the Mediterranean, is it? We could always hope, but it's sunny enough to actually get out. And it's gone from horrendous wind to nothing. The monitors are barely going round. Not quite no wind. If we look over this way, there's a boat in the distance which has just started its big diesels up. Uh -huh. And you can see that the uh, smoke is blowing. Yeah, but we're talking very, very little wind but oh, I think Beverly and I just need to get out and it might just be a little side trip to somewhere um, but you know maybe put the anchor down at Grunsport or something just something just do anything <sighs> but as long as it means going out so job number one is to get salty sausage off the foredeck back into the water Ah, well that's salty sausage back in the water. Now all we need to do is get salty lasses back in the water. Well she's in the water, but ah, just back out to sea really. We could do some breeze though, couldn't we? Yeah, but do you know what? If we can just motor, that'll at least be a, a little bit of a shakedown. So now that the good weather's come back in and it's lovely and sunny out, what have we done? What's, our, what's been our thing for the day? <laughs> We're aiming to fill up with fuel. <laughs> and even that is filled with issues. But I've uh, managed to back the boat. Uh, sorry. What's the, what's the correct term for going backwards? I think back is fine. Going astern. I've managed to go astern. Uh, correctly into another um, uh, position while I wait for the boat that's um, on the fuel dock to uh, go off. And you're looking very fetching in your nice new bright red life jacket, even if you are throwing salty lass cards all over the floor. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Um, a few minutes and um, it's clear that a few things need to be sorted out. Look at the state of these lines. Got a bit green over the winter. Green! So uh, some care, love and care is going to have to be um, bestowed on them before we uh, go out proper. Are you enjoying yourself? Oh Bev, I think we really, really needed this. Just to get out. A couple of tacks and a jibe. Yeah, but we haven't practiced our ta tacks and jibe for a long time, so great, great time to start. It's lovely to be out though, isn't it? Oh yeah, absolutely. So what are you doing and why are you wearing gloves? Hey! Hey, leather gloves. Um, we go off in a couple of weeks and we are stocking up with provisions. So these are going to have the labels stripped off them and they're going to be put in boxes which go in the bilge. Um, we're stocking up a little earlier than we would have done previously. We would have done this in about a week or two's time but 
it's no big secret that the world is infected and restrictions are often going in people's movements and we don't know the shops could just all shut tomorrow and say no more so we're going to stock our bilges up now and our cupboards and things like that it means we'll have to top up again in a couple of weeks but if we are locked down and we have to stay here in the boat at least we have a couple of weeks worth of provisions aboard um, you could call it stockpiling perhaps but we stockpile every time we go out to sea so this is normal operating procedure for us. You know, you're going to go to sea in a week or two, you start putting stuff in the bilges. So the labels are coming off these, they're going to get labelled up with a pen, put in the bilge boxes and then go underneath in the bilges and we'll pack the cupboards as well. It's mainly things like tomatoes, it's dry goods like noodles and rices because they keep well on board. This is not special virus panic buying, this is what we always put on board. We put it on six months ago, we put it on 12 months ago because it keeps really, really well. And we're on a sailboat. We don't have a freezer, so everything's got to keep. If it doesn't keep, we can't have it. Um, so things like chopped tomatoes in a tin, keep forever. They're wonderful. Um, cured Spanish sausages like uh, chorizo, they last for like six months if you keep them in their packaging, so they're great in our little fridge. Uh, eggs. In the US, I know you all put eggs in your fridges and freezers and things like that, and when you take them out, they all go poof and go off. Um, over here we don't put them in fridges, we just keep them out in the open and the protective shell that the hen puts on them when they're born and, and the mucus layers keeps them fresh for like a month, month and a half. So eggs we can keep out. So we've got some eggs as well. Uh, we've got other essentials, things that are really important like coffee. I mean, sorry, but salty lass would halt in the morning if there was no coffee aboard. Uh, we've got green tea aboard because we drink it by the gallon. Um, we've got chocolate aboard. <laughs> chocolate and you know it's things like that so we've got soups we've got mushrooms we've got peas um, we don't have much potatoes we did buy three or four tins of potatoes last year and we never opened I think we opened like one of them the whole year um we've we opened them when we actually got in um we didn't open them out at sea we didn't open them out at sea because so we're, we're not putting those in the villages there's no point yeah, it was things like um, peas and things like that that we went through a lot of. And to be of. honest, we're in Ireland at the minute. We're in the north of Ireland. And trust me, this is potato country. I mean, they, they're they everywhere here. You go out into a field, you'll trip over potatoes. They are absolute. I mean, they're, they're, they're in bags in the supermarket this high. Mm. Um, so getting fresh potatoes around here is not really a big thing. I mean, this is, this is where they make them. This is where they grow them. So, yeah. yeah. So that's what we're doing today. Well, Beverly's stacking everything away and it always <laughs> amazes her just how much stuff we can get in our wee boat. Oh, salty lass is like... Sorry, go on. It's like a little storage depot. It certainly is. Whereas uh, I've just put the cornflakes away and uh, in the process found some true grit. <laughs> but, <laughs> but in this case, we don't want any true grit. Well, we bought loads, but it's actually only come down to one um, box of food in the bilge. We've still got another two boxes to go, so yet more shopping to be done. sorted. What are you doing Gainer? Well the instruments are going on for the first time in weeks because they're gonna have to. <laughs> the uh, L flag is flying um, and uh, the restrictions come in tonight. All our plans are just up in the air. Um, you know we can't get into a lot of berths and areas in Ireland. Scotland's closed down. So, um, we've decided to take a um, berth up at Carrick. I think saying we've organised one is overstating the issue a bit. <laughs> that is true. We phoned up and said, if we come today, will you let us in? And we said, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're going to let us in. <laughs> so. Yeah, that, that's the contract we've organised. They won't turn us away. You know, we're uh, transiting before all the marinas are locked down to Carrick, which is about five miles that way. We're motor sailing, we've got the Jenny out on the second reef. Uh, we've got the motor doing about two and a half thousand revs and we're doing 6.3 knots. So hopefully then Carrick, we will be there in about 40 minutes time. 
Yeah, we could say over. It is quite late. Look, it's, so a, it's, a, it's a crappy day. All sorts of things are going to happen. There might be lockdowns and things. Our mission is to get into Carrick as quickly as we can. So that means motor sailing and getting the heck out of this weather and hoping that the entrance isn't too nasty going into Carrick. But, you know, we're getting gusts at the minute. It's currently 4 6 and it is what it is. So, yes, the lunatics are at sea again in 4 6. <laughs> but I'll tell you now, it's not the wind that you have to worry about, it's always sea stay. See, see, it's not too bad. It's a little, um, it's a little bit lumpy, but we've been out far, far worse. It's a little bit lumpy, but the thing is, this is well livable for us. Yeah. You know, but the I tides turn. One there that we're looking at here is on the anchor. Yeah. Oh, and then there's another one behind it on anchor. Yeah, I've got uh, both of those on the AIS, but no details for them, just their numbers. So it's maybe not so. Let's see what the doors and the scores are. Is it going to collide? Not at the moment. <laughs> I'm looking down at my chart and it's full of triangles, I feel like Pythagoras. But on the plus side, the Stella Superfast, which is just over there, will not get within a mile of it according to the AIS. So all good stuff. But I've got six vessels moving around in various bits in front of me. And I can see one, two, three, four, five, six. So, and there's a tug away over there. Pardon me. So it's working. Hey, they can see us, we can see them, and the twin are not going to meet. Even better, that's the whole idea. You don't want to go whack and ram them. They get very upset when you ram them. Not half as upset as I get, because they get their paint scratch and I sink. Might is right. So what happens next? It's called dinner and I'm having a glass of wine Whoa. Look, or at least cider, anything but alcohol is definitely passing my lips And this is our dinner um, uh, we, that uh, Mr D has been cooking while we've been sailing Doesn't look the most appetising on the camera but trust me it's a great assault on the nostrils Yeah it's um, beef madras 